and we're back! Mr. Bones, we are back. And maybe for the last time. Oh, uh, you say that every year. What? 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 Are you saying I'm getting predictable? Uh, I wonder where I got that from. Well, Mr. Bones, why would you say that I uh, say that every year? Around this time, the fall feasts, what could make me say that? Oh, well, uh, we know the tribulation needs to start with the fall feasts. Therefore, the rapture must happen before. That's exactly right. And Mr. Bones, you know, the other reason is, it's my favorite reason. Can we say it together? Nobody knows the day or the hour that the rapture's not gonna happen. So, we know one thing. God said, I do everything at appointed times. I have appointments with mankind. They're called my Moedim, appointments with mankind, where I'm going to fulfill my plan. And if you remember, we went over his plan, Mr. Bones, save mankind, and kind was lost. You're lost by just not being saved. You're lost already. It's gonna find a bride. That's the Shabbat. The Passover was how he saved mankind. Then he would offer the marriage cup. That's the Pentecost, the Feast of New Wine, where he poured out the Spirit on mankind. He would sound an alarm and bring seven days of testing, the days of awe, between the Feast of Trumpets and Yam Kippa, the Day of Atonement. There's gonna be a final separation, a final judgment. There's been judgments along the way, but there's gonna be a final one, y'all know. And then he will dwell among men and start a new beginning. That's Sukkot and Hanukkah. So God had his plan. And we could see a rapture scenario at the time the church started when the Spirit was poured out at the Feast of New Wine on Pentecost. We also can see a trumpets scenario. The days of awe really seem like the tribulation days expanded from seven days to seven years. The judgment day, Yom Kippur, that could be a time of a rapture. And of course, Sukkot, because we are gonna dwell in a temporary dwelling for seven. And the final day of that, Shemini Atzeret, we're gonna show how all those things fit together and how they play a part. But Mr. Bones, you remember what we're supposed to be doing all through this month and into the 10 days of awe? Yes, Psalm 27 and blowing the trumpet. Blowing the shofar. That's pretty good. The last trump. The last trump can have different meanings. It could be the last one they blow, but also the trumpet of the end, the trumpet of the last. But if you remember, we're reading Psalm 27, and you know, as you study it, and the Lord has you repeat this for 40 days, He knows. He's helping you memorize it by just going through. Memorization is, is not as much tying little mnemonic devices or, or trying to uh, focus on your memory, but repetition, repetition. And as you just continue, especially if you put a little style in it, it, it helps that repetition. And that's why I say it the way I say it. But you all know how it starts with the Lord is. And every time it says the Lord, it's actually Yahweh. And I've thought this for a while because when I read through the entire Bible, and go to and fro, I have never found a place where it says, do not say the name of the Lord. And so, you know, all of our translations have capital L-O-R-D, but the original manuscripts, the, the scrolls, it, it had Yahweh's name. What we say in English, Y-H-V-H, but uh, as you know, it was in pictures back then. And so Israel, with the blinders on, they were never meant 
to not say that name, that beautiful name. And if you look at it, this was the original picture language, and they all knew this from the earliest childhood. They were being taught how to understand these pictures. And so when they were saying the Lord's name, they were seeing the hand and the Spirit of God representing the grace and behold, and the nail and the grace behold. So it was a double portion of the Spirit. Remember, Jesus came as a life-giving Spirit. And it's, it's saying the hand, behold, in grace, nailed, behold, in grace, Yahweh. And you, you might have heard this um, teaching that actually the way to say it, Y-H-V-H, is like a breath. Yahweh, Yahweh. And so the very first thing you say when you're born, you come out of the womb, you're not breathing yet, you're hooked to the umbilical cord, and the very first thing you say is, <gasps> and the very last thing you'll say if you die on this earth before we're raptured, that last breath you take is, Yahweh. And remember, God, when he formed Adam out of the dust of the earth, he breathed into him. And that breath is associated with the spirit. I'm sorry, Mr. Bone. Hey, don't mind me. <laughs> to scoot you a bit. Is associated with the spirit of God. So he's saying the Holy Spirit. So Yahweh is the hand behold nailed. Behold. That brought back the nail also connects Spirit of God to the Spirit given back to man. The first man was a living soul, Adam, and he lost the Spirit. The second Adam, or last Adam, Jesus, came as a quickening Spirit. Quickening means to bring to life. So if they had just read that name, and of course they did and do, but with the blinders on, they weren't seeing it. Just like when the rapture happens, we'll look back and we'll see all the clues. We're like, of course it was going to be on that appointed time. But until then, until we have the confirmation, these things could go in, in different directions. You know, So they're seeing, wow, God, he's bringing the spirit back. He's going to be the hand nailed. So then they see Jesus on the cross, his hands nailed, and that name written above his head. And the Jews, <laughs> instead of seeing, hey, I finally get it. No, they say, take that sign down, that's blasphemy. So this is, this is God's way. It's kind of a little bit in your face, but a little bit also a mystery. But now listen to this again. So Yahweh, Yahweh. And it, it, it is appropriate also to say Yahweh or Yah. Hova or Yehovah. So God knows his name and he knows when we are addressing him the best we can. So don't, don't get hung up that you have to say it correctly. I love uh, uh, many people say my name different in my, in my family and I especially love my little uh, Astrid how she says it. So God knows when you're addressing him but Yahweh is my light and my salvation. So Take that apart for a second. Yahweh, so the hand, behold, is nailed, behold, is bringing the life-giving spirit, which is the breath of God. He's my light and my Yeshua. Let's go to John 1. Y'all know it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But let's read it and uh, take this apart for a second. Sorry. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life 
was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. How beautiful. Okay, so he says, in the beginning, the word, he was the light, and that light was the life of men. So when Adam, let's get Mr. Bones has it, our gospel message. Help me out there, buddy. Adam lost it. You can't go to heaven without it. God sent his only begotten son to win it back. What is it? Ask most Christians that. They won't know. But it's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Good job there, Mr. Bones. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Man, I got posters everywhere because we got a lot to talk about. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, Adam lost it. And at that point, he knew he was naked. And God said to Adam, who told you you're naked? It's one of my favorite lines. For any of you that think God doesn't have a sense of humor, that was funny. Okay? So, Mr. Bones, what did he lose? He lost the light. They were clothed in light. And they didn't know they were naked because they had the light, which was the life of men. So, they go against God, seek to be their own God, seek to be, I can do this myself. And as they ate of that, that gave them knowledge, it was choosing another God. And so the Spirit of God left, and the light that was clothing them, the Shekinah glory, left. And they knew they were naked. So then, Adam and Eve, being body and soul only, would be the parents of all living. And so everybody was born just body and spirit. I mean, body and soul. So now they need the spirit to come back and light them. And so God is telling them, you need the spirit again. Yahweh. Yahweh is my light which is the life of men. That's why Jesus told, when they said, uh, he asked them to follow him. He's like, hey, they, they're like, wait, can we go bury our father? And he says, let the dead bury the dead. So he knew that without that light, that spirit restored, they were dead men walking. So he said, let the dead bury the dead. I have come to bring life. So, Hand of grace behold, nailed in grace behold, is the light, which is the life of men. And you have been born again. And in Daniel it says, those that lead others to righteousness shall shine like the brightness of the stars in the firmament. So all this is all tying together. We're going to be clothed in white, in light. And so the, the, the light probably can take on different forms and that could change our outfits. That's just what I believe. So it's just, it's just, there's so much depth in his word and he's hidden more and more gems for you to dig in and kind of chew on and then to get new revelation. So it's a living word that keeps popping out, but Yahweh is the light. He's the life of men and he is the Yeshua. So he's like, he must put on some pretty powerful blinders on Israel for them not to be able to see this. But they will see it at the appropriate time. And this brings us back to some of our timing. God said in Psalm 90, let's read that part too. Teach me to number my days. Right at the same time, he's explaining the generation of a man. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, or Elohim. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. So, again, with Adam losing the spirit, we were set 
on destruction. And he says, all you have to do is turn back, repent, turn back to me, and let me be salvation. For a thousand years in thy sight are as but yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away with a flood. They are as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, tribulation hint, and by thy wrath we are troubled. That's, he's saying, that's the tribulation. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins are in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath, and we spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, tribulation. For it is soon cut off, and we all fly away. Key point, remember that. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord, the beauty of Yahweh, our Elohim, be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. So, if you pay attention, you hear he's talking about the end of time, and the end of uh, last generation, and what happens at the end, after the wrath and sorrow and tribulation, we're cut off and fly away. So he's got the, the rapture, the rescue, the wrath of God, Jacob's trouble. But he says, teach us to number our days. And he even throws in there, a day for you is a thousand years. So again, he's reminding us, I gave you 6,000 years like I declared in the first sentence. The Aleph is a thousand, 6,000. And he's got the Aleph Tav at the 4,000 and at the 6,000. So we've gone through this before, but we now have an understanding that the cross had to be at the year 4,000 because of taking the lamb, keeping it for four days, and slaughtering it at twilight on the fourth day. So that would be at the 4,000 year at the end. That's when Jesus was on the cross. He will come back at the 6,000th year. But before that, seven years before that, will be the rapture. Okay? So he says, teach us to number our days. And we're going to go over the poster that was on the, on the thumbnail also. But if we apply what he has already told us, he's, he's having multiple different timelines tie us together. And these the timelines can confirm each other, okay? So that's what we're seeing is a uh, uh, congruent uh, matching together like puzzle of all these timelines falling together. So um, if you haven't seen it already, our brother Bobby B, Bob Barber at End Time Dream and Vision just did an excellent video. And uh, I love, Bob's got this gift for uh, seeing something that we all see in, uh, his, his, he calls it the old Bob Barber uh, common sense. And it's, it's like, yeah, I, I didn't even look at it like that. But he, he shows the last 17 years, 17 number of God, perfectly beautiful. The three years wherein the first blood moons were in, in 2014, 15, 16. And they were at Passover and Sukkot, Passover and Sukkot. Pay attention. Then the Revelation 12 sign launched the seven-year warning. And we went over... God really likes to use his sevens, especially the seven years. And then there would be a seven-year tribulation period. So from the Revelation 12 sign, some of you are watching this September 23rd. 
which is the exact seven year anniversary since the greatest sign of all time, a Bible verse written specifically in the stars, in the sun, moon, and stars that never could have happened before or after or, or like that as perfect. Once in 7,000 year sign, okay? So that was definitely the launch, the special moment of the seven year watch. So we've had the, just like Joseph had the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream, there'll be seven years of plenty. And the plenty is the bread of the word. And we've had so much understanding increase as God promised. In the end days, many will run to and fro through the scroll and knowledge of God's purpose shall be increased. And it has been. So now we're on the seven year anniversary of that watch and we're approaching the most amazing month. October uh, is completely lit up all the way till the end. Oh man, I got so much to tell you. I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to do my best to stay in order. But because of the fall feasts, we know that the tribulation needs to start with the fall feasts and rapture needs to happen at an appointed time. So here we're coming up on trumpets and we're going to go through the names of trumpets and their interpretations. And then, so we got the exact seven years of the warning and then enter into the fall feast. And we know the tribulation period, Jacob's trouble, will run from the fall feast, three and a half years to the Passover time and spring feast, and then end at the fall feast at Yam Kippur. So all of that so beautifully tied together, we see for us now, Psalm 90 says, 70 to 80 years, how could God give a seven-year warning and a 10-year warning at the exact same time? So from Revelation 12 sign till us this month is our seven-year warning, but until the middle of the tribulation, that is a 10-year warning. Israel, if we leave this year, we're entering, Israel is entering their 77th year. They're already in it. You know, from uh, the, the year is five, seven, eight, five. And well, it will be at Feast of Trumpets and Day of Atonement. And uh, they were discovered or birthed in 5708. So there's the math, 77. So in the middle of the tribulation, there'll be 80 years. Okay, so we're going to put up this poster now. And I've rambled like a crazy man. Mr. Bones, I'm out of control. Eh, nothing's new. Okay, let me see how we look. You can see that. I gotta back you up a bit, buddy. Hey, don't mind me. <laughs> I never do. <laughs> hey, watch it. <laughs> okay, so, is Yahweh telling us the rapture timing? So again, with, with, with Bob's great video where he highlights all the signs in sun, moon, and stars, comets, asteroids, blood moons, eclipses, everything. I mean, we've had the full gamut. And we're coming up on this uh, Star of Jacob sign that went supernova 2,000 years ago at the time of Christ and then is visible 2,000 years later. How perfect is that? That is so amazing. And Israel is expecting it to be a sign of their coming Messiah. And the star will be seen on the sixth day. On the 25th day of the sixth month, it will be gathered on the seventh day and at the end of 70 days. On that first day, it will be seen in the city of Rome. On that same day, three high structures of that city of Rome will fall and a great edifice will fall. The ruler of that city will die. Then the star will spread out to be seen in the rest of the world. It is taught that in the future, the Holy One, blessed be He, will rebuild Jerusalem and reveal one firm star, glowing with seventy pillars of fire and with seventy sparks flashing from it in the middle of the firmament, and they will be reigned over by 70 other stars, and they will glow and burn for 70 days. Okay, so we have a lot of evidence that has been confirming the 3971 
BC start time. Going 4,000 years to 31 AD. 2,000 years is 2031. That'll be the 6,000th year and also the 2,000. But seven years beforehand must be the rapture. So what do we have showing the rapture? The Jordan crossing, we know the Exodus was in 1446, 47, 46. So 40 years later, when they would cross the Jordan with Joshua on the 10th of Nisan, would be 1407 BC, and they would fight battles in the land for seven years. We got that from Caleb's careful calculation of his age. So again, this is like a tribulation scenario. They come in and they circle Jericho seven times and blow on the seventh day, blow seven trumpets seven times as they're, as they're uh, circling and then they shout and it, and it drops. So it's a prophecy of the seven year tribulation. Then they go into the promised land and they fight wars for seven years. And the first war is against AI. How perfectly appropriate. Generations ago, we didn't know that would have a connection. But with AI, we know exactly what that means. So that's seven years of tribulation. So the book of Joshua uh, resembles and reflects the book of Revelation and the seven years of tribulation. 3,430 years is 70 jubilees. So that's 70 times 49. And that brings you to, from 1407 BC, 3430, 70 jubilees. 70 jubilees are determined for thy people, Daniel. Brings us to the 2024 crossover, hold Passover with Jesus, see the Captain of the Guard, Jesus, right here, right after that. Circumcise their flesh on the other side, then go seven around. That's, that's like us. So, you know, that's why we thought we could go at Passover too, or Nisan. But it's, it still fits in its perfect typology. So, from 1401, there's your seven years. Remember, it's... Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 1401 is when they would enter the promised land and Caleb, the Gentile, would get his land first and it was on the ninth of Av. But 3430 forward brings you to 2030 and 2031. So with Jubilees, you count, you multiply by 49 till you get to the last one, then you add that 50th year. And that would be 2031. So there's our seven years of tribulation. 24 to 25 to 26 to 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So again, the way we have it mapped out, from Feast of Trumpets, October 4th and 5th of 2024, till next Feast of Trumpets 2025, Trumpets 26, Trumpets 27, and then halfway, Passover in 2028. And then the second three and a half years brings you to Yom Kippur in 2031, which would be September 27th, I believe. And then add 75 more days, brings you to December 9th of 2031. So it brings us right to the edge of 2032, as we, as we talked about. So I just want to show you this real quick that I sketched out. This is the numbers of the Psalms and the according year, and then the message of the Psalm, the, the short message. And I got um, some of this from uh, our brother Carl Lawley at Carl Lawley, Porsches and Prophecy. You got to check out this channel. Some amazing timelines, things that... I've never seen anybody else receive. And he wrote this awesome book called Encrypted that you can get on Amazon and get it in a few days. And you think, oh, well, we're about to be raptured. Hey, this thing is going to be amazing for the left behind people. So if you're wanting to do something for the left behind, leave this book next to a bunch of Bibles and maybe a note. It's incredible. Which I've... Uh, 
recommend it. A lot of times I'll recommend videos on my community page. And I, I understand a lot of you don't get notifications of that. So if you will go to this video and um, if you see my name under, if you click on my name, then we'll show up the other sections and you go down, you'll see community. So if you go to this, I've never asked anybody to do this, but if, if you want to see what's on, what we post on our community page of these other good channels that we find and good teachings, go to our channel, Dr. Barry Aw, and click on the notifications and everything, and then go to the community and check that out. And then I think you'll start seeing what we post. But Carl has done a fantastic job of um, the prophecy and the Psalms and about 12 other things. But if we look how this looks, in 2024, there's an escape. 2025, Lord protects Israel. Is that exactly what should happen? In 2026, return captivity and they sow and reap. So Israel will go back, or, or Jews from around the world will go back to Israel. They'll build the house of Yahweh. And in 2028, the middle of the tribulation, there'll be peace in Israel in their house. And you read Psalm 128, and that's exactly what it is. You'll see peace on Israel. Now we're at the middle of the tribulation between 28 and 29, and it matches exactly 1260 days to the middle and the Antichrist will go in at the time of Passover. He'll, he'll kill the two witnesses, and then he'll go in and set himself up as God in the Holy of Holies. So then Psalm 2029, right after this beautiful song of peace and happiness, blessed is the man that trusts in God and in Psalm 128, now 129, Israel's in travail, and they will see Jesus as their Messiah at mid-trib when they are 80 years old. Absolutely perfect. They're 77 now when Jacob first started to seek his brides and they'll be 80. So God gave them, gave us a seven year warning and them a uh, 10 year warning. 2030, they cry from the depths for redeem us, redemption. 2031, they turn to total trust in Yahweh. And between 20, 31 and 32 is when we'll have the Day of Atonement, exactly another 1260. 2032, read Psalm 132, the Lord is crowned in his temple, fulfill the uh, David promise. He'll sit in his throne, the son of David. Israel becomes their priests and saints. That'll happen in 2032. 2033, the world dwells together in peace. And 2034, all come to praise God in his temple, to praise Jesus in his temple. So what we got here, I uh, also, oh, I just want to show you. At the middle of the tribulation, Israel will be 79 years and 11 months. So one month later, they'll be exactly 80, fulfilling God's 80-year prophecy. So what we got here, um, let me do this real quick. Again, from C.J. Lubbock and his work. Here's another two timelines that confirm the other timelines we're looking at. From the Ezekiel prophecy, lay on your side for 390 years, then lay on your other side, or 390 days, a day for a year, prophecy. And then on your other side, for 40 days. It'll be a day for a year. So if Jesus was on the cross at 31, and you count the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 20, 30, 40. So if you count that year, that's exactly 40 years. He didn't have Ezekiel lay on his side for 38 years, making a 32 AD crucifixion. It fits best with 30 and 31. So from 701 BC, you multiply the Ezekiel prophecy 390 times 7, and that's 2730 years, brings you exactly to 2030. Then 770 years later, in 70 AD, Israel, second temple is destroyed in the 9th of Av. Count back 40 years, it's 30 and 31. So these confirm that we're on the right track with the 6,000 year prophecy, and with the Jordan crossing and coming into the promised land 70 jubilees later. Now, if we look at 
When you look at God's year, you know, the 1260 only works if you use 360 day years. But if you go from God's appointed time to appointed time, it works with every year. But you wait until, what did God say was the year's end? Oh, at the uh, Feast of Sukkot, at the year's end. At the year's end, okay? So, at the end of the Feast of Tabernacles, is seven days, then you have Shemini Atzeret, which is the eighth day, tied to Hoshana Robah, which means return back to Torah. And those two days, just like the Feast of Trumpets, is two days known as one day at the Feast of Trumpets. Then at the end, the 22nd and 23rd day, Shemini Atzeret and Hoshana Robah, or I'm sorry, the 23rd day is Simchat Torah. Simchat Torah. That, that, that's return to Torah. Hoshana Rabbah is the last, the seventh day of Tabernacles. Sorry. So, Hoshana Rabbah, Shemini Atzeret, Simchat Torah. Okay. But those last two days, 22 and 23, are considered one long day. So it starts with one long day, two days that are one long day, and ends with two days that are one long day. Okay? So... <laughs> If, if that hasn't confused you enough, we, got, we go to the Shemini Atzeret, and the day after will be October 28th, 2024. So I was just doing some math. What's exactly 1260 days from, Shemin, from not including Shemini Atzeret, but the day after? It brings you exactly to Passover, April 10th, 2028. And then... The witnesses will lie dead in the street for three and a half days. So that brings us to April 14th, 2028. Again, Israel is 80 years old, or 79 years and 11 months. But you go 1260 days from that date, brings you exactly to Yom Kippur, September 27th, 2031. Exactly. 30 more days, the 1290 to cleanse the temple, and then 1335 brings you exactly to Hanukkah on uh, December 10th, 2031. So there's our perfect 1260, but also adding in the 1290 and 1335. That fits next year between 25 and 32. It actually doesn't fit because with um, 25 to 32, that or 25 to 29 at mid-trib, it's going to be 1290 because that's one of the sec sections of three years where you add a month. So it'll be 1290, so it wouldn't fit. We know that the beginning of the tribulation is 1260. Okay? So this fits perfectly this year. Doesn't fit exactly next year, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we'll understand it if it comes to that. Okay? So what I think is we're coming up on... Feast of Trumpets. All right, so Rosh Hashanah. Shing! Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. God comes to the end of the year at the head of the year. The head of the year. Yom Teruah, the days of trumpet and shouting. Just like in Jericho. They marched around seven times and then blew trumpets and shouted. It was the day of shouting and trumpets. Hamalek is the coronation of the king. Ham Yam Ha Dalet is the day of the opening of the gates of heaven. Kiddushin is the wedding of the Messiah. Yam Ha Zikaron is the day of remembrance. Yam Ha Natsel. And Natsel is coded in this Psalm 124, representing the year 2024, where it says a bird has escaped out of the snare. That's the rapture and the resurrection. So one of the names of the Feast of Trumpets is the rapture and the resurrection. Shofar Hagadol is the last trump. Yam Ha Kaseh is the hidden day, the day nobody knows, the day or the hour. Shebiel Shel Mishiach. Jacob's trouble. It's the birth pains of the Messiah. The birth pains of them going through 
to make the understanding of the true Messiah, the one whom they pierced. Yam Hadin is judgment day. Yam Yahweh, the judgment day of Yahweh. And then Zikaron Trua, which is the memorial of triumph and shouts for joy. So when, when we finally tie everything together and look at Feast of Trumpets, which was kind of a mysterious feast, they didn't know what they were blowing trumpets and celebrating. But at the end, they'll look back and say, hey, this is a great day to remember. This is the day we were raptured. So we're looking at this great day of remembrance and the wedding of the Messiah, the coronation, the opening of the gates, the rapture, resurrection. It's like, you know, why were we looking at anything other than trumpets? And, and some of you have seen this over the years. Uh, if you look back through most of my videos, this is in between me and Mr. Bones, almost like subliminal messaging. Trumpets, the day of shouting. <laughs> so I believe the rapture could happen at the Feast of Trumpets, and you know they blow a hundred trumpets and then they blow a last trumpet. I believe the Feast of Trumpets starts on the 4th of October with the first visible crescent near her feet, okay? So it's, it's not the first one they can see, but it's when it gets to the constellation it should be. So most of the new moons start with the crescent in the next constellation, but with Pisces, and Virgo, they're so long, it's, it's within their own constellation also. So, the 4th and 5th will be Feast of Trumpets. Then we'll enter into Seven Days of Awe. Then Yam Kippah will be at the 13th of October. And when, when it's Yom Kippur, you see, again, God's telling his story in the constellations. So at the time of Passover, you see the lamb is highlighted and the moon is over in Virgo. In the Feast of Trumpets, we see the story starts with Virgo, the sun and the moon, but as the moon moves through the feast, when we get to Day of Atonement, the moon is always highlighting Aquarius pouring out judgment on Judgment Day. And then as you go around to the 15th, the sun will be highlighting Israel and the moon will be in Aries, the lamb. So a kind of reverse of Passover at the opposite time of year. Perfect in God's story. And then again, you go through the story of, of following the moon. You get to Shemini Atzeret and the moon is in Cancer, which is the sheepfold. And with Hanukkah, you'll see the sun in the champion, Ophiuchus, and the moon is in the womb of Virgo at the start of every Hanukkah. So it's, it's like God was always, he, he, was, he gave us the sun, moon, and stars so we would know the calendar. And anywhere on earth, they could look up and they could figure out the calendar. I can look at Stellarium and find the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, any feast just by using his system going back and knowing when the beginning of the year is with the sun setting in Pisces and the moon highlighting, uh, the new sliver highlighting Aries. And on the other side, Spica is the branch in Virgo's hand. So he starts the year with his signs. He helps us keep on track and know that his appointed times are on the 15th and the 15th and the 15th and the 15th. So God has his appointed times every odd month, the first, the third, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, the eleventh, and then we got Purim on the twelfth. That's the one specifically only for Israel. But he will replay all of them throughout the tribulation. So we have some people that have decided they're already jumping the next year, 2025. I think it's crazy. I mean, nobody knows the day or the hour that it will happen. Nobody knows the day or the hour it won't happen. So to just skip over all these signs because you're so certain, look, I have over 30 signs about the Pentecost and Feast of Wine that say a Gentile rapture. But when it passed, 
we say, okay, what's next? <laughs> what do we look at? Uh, because it's just silly to say, well, I know for sure it's, it's not going to be till next year. No, you don't. You don't. Honestly, you don't. So that is why my feeling, my gut feeling is now leaning towards tabernacles because of that perfect timeline. But I expect we could go on trumpets, day of atonement, first day of tabernacles, or last day of tabernacles. And we even wrote a song about Shemini Yatzeret. Here it is as a little blast from the past. For more on this special report, we take you live to Dr. Barry on the roof with an umbrella. Of course he is. Dr. Barry? Dr. Barry? Shim shimini, shim shimini, shim shim sharu. We have been blessed to be friends with you. Shim shimini, shim shimini, shimini atzeret. An eighth last day rapture is good as it gets. Shim shimini, shim shimini, shim shim shari. It sure looks like rapture, if you would ask me. Shim shimini, shim shimini, shimini. That's a ret. Our redemption draws nigh. On that you can bet. Shim shimini, shim shimini, shim shim sharu. It's been such an honor for me to serve you. Shim shimini, shim shimini, shimini, atzeret. By looking for Jesus, a crown you will get. By looking for Jesus, a crown we will get. Got it? <laughs> You're supposed to say cut. Okay. That the let that the let. And now Dr. Barry is going to jump off the roof using only this umbrella. Here we go. Ah! That truly was a special report. So talk about blast. Uh, I have blasted you with uh, everything I have been dwelling on. I had so much in my mind. Uh, there's even more that I could go over, but in a wrap up, Yahweh is the light of men, and that light is the life of men. You must be born again. How do you be born again? You hear the story of Jesus and what he did on the cross and that his blood that he spilled was the sacrifice to make atonement for mankind. It was the price that needed to be paid was perfect blood of God made man. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching. His death shall bring the despairing rest and grace and it will restore the spirit of mankind he accomplished his goal now all who believe on and cling to jesus as their salvation you now are born again of the spirit by your belief as adam and eve lost it by their belief that they would be like god and rise above, apart, they lost the spirit by a bite. God came back, Jesus came back and he says, here, bread, eat this, it's my body. Drink this wine, it is my blood. The blood of a new and everlasting covenant. So, he, did, he paid the price to buy us back and it's offered to all mankind. You're not saved by how good you live your life. You're saved by belief, by faith are you saved, not of works, lest any man should boast about their works. This is why I'm excited, because these timelines confirm each other. How can Jesus come back like Moses 
that he prophesied Moses was 80 when he came back to save Israel. He must show up in the middle of the tribulation. I know this has not been taught by very many. I, I know Yaku at uh, God's Roadmap to the End, he sees it this way also, but other than that, I have, I have not heard anybody teaching this, but I believe the middle of the tribulation is a lot more going on than we ever thought. When the two witnesses die and then they come up on their feet and are called up, I've been saying this for years, I believe the 144,000 are also called up, and then the gospel is preached by angels for the wrath of God in the second half. At the middle of the tribulation, God says, now the time has come. Satan is kicked out. Now the kingdoms of this world have become Yahweh's. At the middle of the tribulation, he's going to land on the Mount of Olives and split it in half, just like Moses split the Red Sea. And it's going to be the next Exodus. And as they go out into Petra, they will now be 80 years old, fulfilling that perfect typology of Moses, and they will know Jesus at that time, 70 to 80 years. It was a seven-year warning for us, which is right now, and it was a 10-year warning for them, which will be in 2028 in the spring. Absolutely perfect. All the signs in the sun, moon, and stars, all the timelines, God said, teach me to number my days that I might apply my head to wisdom and my heart. So, Again, trumpets, atonement, tabernacles. If they pass, God forbid, because we really want the tribulation to start perfectly on time too and us to be out before. But there's still a little wiggle room. Followed, you know, right after the next month is the month of the flood anniversary. We know how that fits. And then Hanukkah. Enoch was the first one raptured. So it still would fit all the way the rest of this year. So we'll, we'll handle it as it comes. But here's another thing I want you to, talk, to think about. We get raptured up. What's the first thing in heaven, Mr. Bones? He opens the first seal and the white horse rider comes out bringing peace. So we are entering the end of the year for God. It's the last month, the month of October. If we get raptured in the month of October, immediately after is the U.S. election in November, and Trump will win because he is the only one that can be the white horse rider. He's, he's not the Antichrist, in my opinion. He's a, a Antichrist. Jesus said there are many Antichrists. So he's on the team, just like the Pope. Okay, but Satan will be the real guy. And uh, I believe the, the one that will rise up as, as Antichrist for the first part, I believe he's a young man around 30 years old, fulfilling that typology of Jesus. But Trump is the guy that can bring peace to Israel. And peace, he's the only one with relations to everybody. He is the one that will get the temple built. They have already crowned him. They gave him a crown when he was in office last time. They gave him a golden menorah, and on the, on the bottom of it said, Donald Trump, Prince of Peace. They put him on a coin with Cyrus, calling him a Messiah, an anointed one. He keeps saying God saved him for the purpose of saving the world. So he's calling himself God's anointed special savior, so Israel already sees him as that. They see the Messiah just like Cyrus was a type of Messiah that helped them build their temple. He was anointed, chosen by God. That's how they already see Trump. So Trump has to go in. Well, guess what? He go, he'll go in. The election will be in November. He'll actually take office in January. But still, how perfect for us to be raptured. God opens the first seal and boom. Here comes the white horse rider, and it's Donald J. Trump bringing peace and prosperity, right? And Israel starts to prosper, but it'll be during Great Tribulation because the next seal is war and famine and, and uh, uh, death and hell. So the four horsemen of the apocalypse are still coming. 
But in the second half of the tribulation, I don't know if, if, if any of you have, have read this, but in the second half of the tribulation, there's another four horsemen of the Apollyon or Apocalypse or Abaddon. And they are horses with lion's heads and snakes tails and they breathe out fire and they, they come out with that locust horde and it's like a 200 million men army and supernatural. So the second half of the tribulation is like all supernatural. And that's why I believe those that died during the tribulation and resisted the mark and, and uh, made it, you know, however uh, they went, they were martyred, but they will be taken up in the middle of the tribulation when Israel is taken to Petra. All right. I uh, hope uh, you got something out of that. I was kind of excited about this. And uh, like I said, I just had so much that I wrote notes everywhere. I hope it was uh, enjoyable for you and a blessing for you. I believe this is our year. Uh, we will wait and see, but I expect to see you in the air in October of 2024. Mr. Bones, I'm out of here. Oh, uh, was I going to say anything? You got, you got something to add? Uh, I think raptures at the Feast of Trumpets. <laughs> That's my boy.